Hello Guilford, I'm Ashley Lynch with GNN. And I'm Millie Carter. And this was your week. On February 23rd from 4.30 to 5.50, there will be an information session on the PowerShift event. PowerShift is an opportunity for young people around the country to affect national legislation on the subject of climate control, the EPA, and Clean Air Act. This is all happening April 15th through 18th in Washington, D.C. Come to this gathering to learn more about the event or contact Chelsea Barber. For CCE students, there will be a CCE student success workshop beginning with meditation on Thursday, March 3rd from 6 to 7 p.m. in Hendricks Hall Classroom 114. The benefits of meditation are many and can bring about feelings of confidence and self-control, increased concentration, better relationships, and reduced stress levels, just to name a few. Look out for our other Spring 2011 workshops. Contact 336-316-2442 for more information. The Greensboro Sports Commission and the NCAA are pleased to announce the Grand Over Resort and Conference Center has been selected as the host site of the 2011 NCAA Division III Men's Golf National Championship, May 10-11, 2011. Guilford and the Greensboro Sports Commission will serve as co-host of the 37-team, 190-student event. Guilford has made 27 uh, nation, national tournament appearances over the past 33 years, won the 2002 and 2005 NCAA Division III golf titles, and finished second in 2001 and 2010. In addition, the Quakers won the 1989 NAIA National Tournament. The Quakers hosted the 1979 NAIA Men's Golf Championship at the Cardinal Golf and Country Club. The Grandover Resort is a prestigious resort located on the south side of Greensboro among 1,500 acres of oak, pine, and dogwood-covered hills. David Graham and Gary Ponce designed two 18-hole golf courses, which were both ranked four and a half stars by Golf Digest and is listed among America's best places to play. On February 23rd, from 2.30 to 3.30 in Bryan Jr. Auditorium in the Frank Family Science Center, there will be an info session about the 4th Annual Guilford Undergraduate Symposium, scheduled for Friday, February 25th, 11.30 to 4 p.m. Share your questions and ideas for making the most of this opportunity for community building and personal growth. This year's presenters, come meet with the chair and others participating in your session. Not presenting this year? Come for information about this year's program and participating as an audience member and start thinking about presenting next year. And now for sports news. Baseball split a non-conference doubleheader with visiting Case Western Reserve Sunday. The Quakers 3-6 scored five runs in the bottom of the seventh in a 9-8 opening game win, but could not rally in the nightcap as the Spartans 3-1 prevailed. 5-1, Guilford's Jay Cox had two of Quakers' six hits. While Case Western returns to Cleveland, Ohio, Guilford heads to Ferrum College Tuesday, February 22nd for a 3 o'clock p.m. non-conference game. Also, for men's lacrosse, Chris Sis scored three goals and an assist in Guilford College's 10-9 men's lacrosse win over visiting Ferrum College Friday afternoon in the Armfield Athletic Center. The Quakers, 2-0, held on against the first-year Panthers, 0-2, who nearly erased two six-goal deficits. Guilford scored seven of the game's first eight goals, but Ferrum slowly chipped away and pulled to within 9-7 after three quarters. Guilford's Chris Ashcraft finished with two goals and an assist. Teammate Henry Farley contributed a goal and an assist. Mark Gillen had a team-high six ground balls. James Stegman had a career-high seven calls turnovers and picked up five ground balls. The teams traded possession for the remainder of the game, but neither squad took a shot until Ferrum's Dylan Bur Burdick let one fly in the game's waning seconds. Gillen stopped it for his eighth save of the game just before the final horn. Guilford returns to action February 27th against visiting Marywood at 1 p.m. For U.S. News, the state of Michigan has ordered that half of Detroit public schools will have to close. Due to this, class sizes will have to be increased to 60 students. The state has struggled to find a successful financial manager to help deal with the situation. Also, Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin has faced a lot of protests and backlash nationwide for creating a budget bill that would raise the cost benefits to public employees and give them less bargaining rights. The opponents say that their wages and health care are at stake in this bill. Last week, 14 Democratic state senators boycotted the bill and currently are in Illinois, preventing a vote until Walker negotiates on the plan to eliminate collective bargaining rights for everything but wages. In lighter news, an Egyptian man has named his daughter Facebook in honor of the website's role in the country's revolution. 
The girl's full name is Facebook Jamal Ibrahim. The father said he wanted to show his appreciation for the website's role in organizing the original protests on January 25th. Also, in a return to the Middle East, Libya has been the latest country to be facing unrest. Protesters, including Libyan UN diplomats, have called for the removal of Muammar Gaddafi. As of this Monday, there have been at least 233 people killed because of the protests. There have been reports that helicopters have shot on protesters. Keep an eye out for updates. And that's all for this week's news. Good luck with midterms, Guilford, and have a great spring break.